That's his itchy spot. I never get tired of looking at this valley. Um, it's just so gorgeous. And this is what we'd lose, of course. There was somebody here who wanted to talk to us about leasing the land for gas drilling. I just said, no, not interested. Tell him to go away. Then he started writing us letters and calling on the phone and showing up at the door. He said, look, I know that you've been telling me to go away, but I need you to know that all of your neighbors have signed, all of the land around you is leased. So whether you sign the lease or not, we will come in here and take the gas. And so I did, I signed their lease. Uh, it took me another six months to find out what I had done. What had you done? I had, oh, uh, <sighs> Dried in New York, where Marie McRae lives, sits atop an oil and gas deposit that stretches from New York to Alabama. The company that leased her land planned to drill it with a process known as hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, a process that's currently driving a drilling boom all across America. While fracking produces profit for some, Marie learned that it also produces pollution, industrial explosions, earthquakes, and changed communities. She also learned that she wasn't the only person being approached. There were people who were organizing educational forums for the public where I learned about high volume hydraulic fracturing. Every little bit of information that I got was worse than what I had known before. We started working together, I, I would say at least two or three times a week in the early days and deciding, well, what are we going to do? What can we do? And what are our options? Because the industry kept telling us, we have the power, you have none, we are coming, get out of the way or leave. And we were like deer in the headlights. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. They're telling us we don't have a choice. And here comes two attorneys, New Yorkers, who said, you most certainly do have a choice, but you have to act very quickly. There was this general perception that fracking was coming. There was nothing you could do. There was this oncoming train wreck. You knew it was going to be a train wreck. And you couldn't even get out of the way. From our background, uh, having been corporate lawyers, our thinking was, there has to be something you can do. You don't keep a job as a corporate lawyer telling your clients, no, they can't do something. Like, you find a way for them to do what they want to do. So we started looking at this, like, well, so what can you do? They say you can't regulate the industry, so what's a regulation? As we looked and started researching this idea of, well, what's a regulation, it became clear in New York that a land use prohibition was not considered to be a regulation of an industry. So we were like, well, it looks like you could prohibit this, which was sort of an emperor has no clothes moment. It was like, well, we can't regulate it, but we can say no. Like, that's pretty good. Like, <laughs> we'll take that. But nobody had said that. All the other, the big national groups that said no, that wasn't what it meant. The land men said no, that wasn't what it meant. Cooperative Extension said no, that wasn't what it meant. And we were two lawyers from Ithaca and we're like, well, we disagree with everyone. <laughs> it was sort of like this little glimmer of hope that came out. It's like, wow, you mean there might be something we can do at a local level? So that glimmer of hope really brought this team together and we said, okay, let's, how do we do this? And we met with David and Helen and they said, you know, they're doing the same thing in a neighboring town, Ulysses, and they're doing it with a petition drive. So start a petition drive. 
We went door to door, talking to our neighbors, talking to people we'd never met. And then we have folks on our team like Martha Ferger, who's 88 years old, and she knows everybody. What she did was sit at her table with the phone and called everybody she knew and told them they had to come to her house and sign this petition. And it's amazing, she got the most okay, number you. of signatures. We sort of made it a challenge as well, and Joe Wilson did this. Every evening, Joe would send an email. I got this number of signatures today. How many did you get? On the night that we announced it to the town board, we were able to walk into that town board meeting with a stack of petitions. We had something to give them that they could see that we meant business, and so did everybody who signed that. After receiving the petition, holding a public comment period, and debating through hours of meetings, the board scheduled a vote to decide whether or not the town would allow fracking. I think each board member would say that they really did not absolutely make up their minds until that night. And right up until the day that we were there at that meeting, we were not 100% sure that we had unanimous votes. When a vote is called, uh, each town board member has to respond individually down the line, and each one of them said, Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we will ban this. Um, my voice by itself um, carries very little weight, but when I join my voice with my immediate neighbors, with the larger community uh, that I live in, we all together have a voice that's loud enough for our elected officials to hear.